show you how to make your very own stop motion animation. With stop motion animation, you can make any object come to life. And with enough time and patience and creativity, you can do almost anything and create something truly magical. So before we get going, I just want to tell you a little bit about how stop motion animation works. Um, in the past, maybe you have seen one of those little booklets where somebody has drawn a little figure and then on the next page it just is a little bit different and on the next page it's a little bit different and then when you flip through it looks like the picture is moving. This serves as a good example of how all video and animation works. So what you're looking at right now with me in this video is in fact every second you're seeing 30 pictures of me. Uh, so that's why it looks like I'm moving because you've got one picture like this, one picture like this, another picture like this, another picture like this, another one like this. And when they're all put together quickly, it just looks like one smooth motion. And that is what we're going to try to achieve when we're doing stop motion animation. We're going to take a picture of something, then we're going to move it just a little bit and take another picture, and move it just a little bit and take another picture, and just a little bit and take another picture. And then when we put all of them together at a higher speed, faster, it's going to look like everything is just moving all by itself. You can make things grow, you can make things shrink, you can make things appear out of nowhere, they can move across the screen. Um, maybe you want to use toys that you already have, so if you want them to do interesting things, you might have to use little pieces of sticky tack or clay or some kind to get them to stick. Like if you want a doll that doesn't usually stand up to walk, you might have to stick it to the table with some kind of sticky stuff. Um, or if you want a car that kind of, you know, you can get a car to roll across the table in a video, but maybe you want it to turn or you want it to go up on its end. There's all kinds of different things you can do. So I'm just going to show you some tips and some tricks, um, some techniques for stop motion animation that are pretty simple. And after that, just let your creativity and your imagination take you wherever you would like to go because you can make something pretty fascinating if you just put your mind to it. So let's talk about what we need in order to do that. Um, I like to make animations using construction paper. It's uh, two-dimensional, sort of looks a little three-dimensional at times, um, and so I like to move the pieces of construction paper one frame at a time to make my animation, but you might want to use clay, you might want to use wire, or you might want to use some toys or just some objects that you have around and make them move across the screen. Anything like that is fine. Um, it's a good idea to prepare in advance, so as you can see here I have all of my pieces cut out for the animation that I want to make. Um, so also, so you're going to want to make sure that you have a lot of light. You don't want uh, to lose your light while you're in the middle of trying to make your animation because the lighting has to be very close to the same all the way through. So right now I am beside a window on this side, I've got some lights on that side. You're just going to want to make sure that you are in a bright spot. Um, and try and time yourself so that you start at a time of day when it's not just about to get dark if you're depending on that outside light. A little tiny bit of change is, is okay unless you're trying to make a blockbuster hit, uh, but you want to try and keep it as consistent as you can. So you're definitely going to need a camera, um, and any camera will do. A camera on a smartphone is perfect. You can totally use that, um, and I'll show you how to set that up. The other thing you're going to need to do is to make some kind of tripod because you need your camera to stay very, very, very still. Um, so you don't have to have a tripod. I am lucky to have a tripod because I do a lot of photography. Um, you might have a microphone stand that you can use. You can get some of these clamps and sort of clamp your camera on. You might have a selfie stick which would be super great because that already holds on to your camera for you or you might have a tiny little tripod. Um, so if you can find something that will hold your camera and then you can clamp that on to something else, then you're ahead of the game. But I'm going to show you how to sort of make a tripod out of stuff that you have around if you don't have any of those things. Um, so here I'm going to show you my tripod. So this is the tripod I have concocted from a chair. A paddle from my kayak, some clamps. So I've got uh, the paddle is clamped to the chair. There's a clamp on the chair, there's another clamp on the paddle, and there's a clamp that attaches the clamp on the paddle to the clamp on the chair. And then the paddle runs through the chair, and my old iPhone is clamped to the end of the paddle. 
Any, so you can have your iPhone on top of the paddle because the only part that needs to be poking over is the little part that has the camera lens in it. So you can have the whole thing kind of lying on top of whatever's holding it up. Um, so I've got a clamp holding my phone onto some business cards and then onto the paddle just to try and make things even and I had to fiddle around with it a lot. You're probably going to need a grown-up to help you if you're not a grown-up yourself just to get it as perfectly square as you can and then you're going to want to make sure that that does not move at all while you're doing your stop-motion animation because that is the part that makes everything look alive is when what's happening here is moving but your camera is staying very very still. So we're going to make sure that that is happening as well. So for my um, construction paper animation, I have some sticky tack. Actually, I couldn't find my sticky tack, so I had some Fimo lying around, so I'm just using that. It's just a type of clay that you bake. It's just not very sticky, but it's just sticky enough that it'll hold the paper down to the table because I don't want the background to move, and I just want my objects on top to move. And I've got my glue stick, and some parts are glued down, other parts are moving. Just want to make sure that I'm in control and everything that I need to stay still stays still. So sticky tack and glue are very important. So I just want to show you that this does work even though I've got a kayak paddle instead of a tripod and a phone instead of a professional camera. Um, you'll see that the end result is still pretty cool and you can kind of uh, make whatever you want just using those simple tools. Um, this is a very simple animation. It's only got a few moving parts. I think it's got six or seven uh, pieces all together, but you'll see that in the end it, it does do something pretty neat. Uh, you can make this as simple or complicated as you want it to be. Even the most simple animation will take a lot of patience, but if you have lots of time on your hands, you could spend days making all the moving parts before you start the photography process even. After this, maybe go check out my uh, Little Bees music video if you haven't seen that already. I spent about 60 hours cutting out all the tiny pieces for that animation, then maybe 10 hours preparing for the photography process and taking the pictures, and then a lot of time kind of editing everything. I'll give you some software or app suggestions for putting all of these pictures together and making the actual video file in the notes on this video. So just check out those notes below for that information. So here's a much more complex little animation. What's going on is very simple. There's just two kids blinking. Um, but for every little section of the blink, I have to switch out the eyelids. Um, so we've got a little tiny eyelid when the blink begins, and then the eyelids get bigger. The bottom eyelid sort of comes up to meet the top one, and then I've got uh, a completely shut eye, and then it um, opens up again. And then I've done that for each of the kids on the piece of paper. You know, you can kind of decide whether you want to do something that's that detailed or not, or keep it really simple like I did with the clouds. It just depends on how much time and how much patience you have. If you are doing claymation, when I did this little example of claymation, um, I had a very heavy little person here. And they kept falling over, uh, their head was heavy, and so I ended up tying a string into their hair and tying them up to something above so I could just stand them up. I would recommend, especially if you are a younger kid, um, to do your claymation flat. So make the background lying on the table and then have the, the clay person or animal or whatever you've made lie flat on the ground and kind of move your camera so it's facing down instead of trying to stand them up. That would be my recommendation or if you really want to do it standing up do your best to keep your little figure small and light so it doesn't fall over like mine did. Another tip I want to give you is to somehow make this comfortable for yourself because it does take a really long time to take all these pictures and you're going to be hunched over quite a lot um, adjusting what's going on in front of the camera. So yeah, just set yourself up to be comfortable because you're in it for the long run once you get going on this. So I hope you have a lot of fun making your very own stop motion animation. Um, please send me whatever you make. If you post it up on the internet, tag me in it. I'd love to see it. Um, if you want to send it directly to my email, which you can find online, I'd love to put it together in a sort of a compilation of everybody's little animations. That would be really cool. So send me what you've got. I'd love to see it and have fun.